What kind of a boat are you in this morning? What, what is your sea like this morning? Is it a calm sea? Is it just one with a little bit of waves? Or is it one with lots of big waves and storms and high winds and you don't know what's coming next? I have a hunch that here in the congregation this morning we have people in all kinds of boats and all kinds of weather. And as we listen to the readings this morning, I think there's several little points that we can kind of remember. This story begins of Jesus telling the disciples, get into the boat, go away. I'm going to go up to the mountain and pray. What has happened before this is Jesus had, the crowd had followed him, and he had, the, they had had five loaves and fishes, and he fed 5,000 men plus women and children, so probably 10,000 or whatever, whatever that number happens to be. But before that, John the Baptist, his cousin, had been beheaded and been killed. And so, you know, it's like Jesus, the crowds were following him, and he really didn't have time to do any grieving. And when we lose somebody that's very important in our lives and somebody that we love or is close to us, we need to do that grief. We need to take that time that we can have to to really reflect on that and feel our sadness and, and have that grief time. So, you know, I think this is maybe one of the reasons Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, to be with God the Father, to, to really reflect and pray. And, and yet, as he was praying, he somehow was aware that the disciples out on the boat were in the middle of a storm. Now, this, the scriptures say it was like in the early morning, probably between 3 and 6 in the morning. So Jesus probably had spent a considerable amount of time in prayer. And you know, sometimes in prayer, uh, people get a sense of somebody that they love is in trouble. Every now and then we read of somebody who uh, the family member starts praying for some, another family member far away because they have a sense that something may not be right. But in this, Jesus had a feeling that the, the, the horn was blowing. <laughs> and so as he was... <laughs> so Jesus considered, you know, he was worried about the disciples too, and he loved them very much. So he goes out to meet them. Well, now here's this big storm going on, and in the days of Jesus, they believed in evil spirits and ghosts, and, and so here comes this figure over the water. So can you imagine what the disciples in the boat are thinking? What's happening here? And then Jesus says, Do not be afraid. It is I. Well, you know Peter. Now, Peter often speaks out sometimes before he thinks, and I don't know whether he thinks, but he's a very much outgoing person, and he says, Well, if it really is you, Lord, tell me to come to you. So Jesus says, Come. So, Peter gets out of the boat, and I suspect he wasn't thinking, because I think if he was thinking, he might have hesitated. He gets out of the boat and starts walking to Jesus. But then all of a sudden he starts doubting and starts thinking. And Jesus reaches out his hand and, and helps him get back into the boat. And then the storm, the wind is calmed. And I think as we listen to that, how often we, in the midst of all of our struggles, doubt and and that's human, there's nothing wrong with that. Because, you know, the disciples doubted a lot. We read about it sometimes. And this time, you know, they didn't know who this was. And then at Jesus, and then, then they worshiped him, knowing who he was. And I think, you know, as we listen to the readings this morning, we think about that, how often when we're in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of pain and suffering, or 
whatever happens, it doesn't necessarily happen to be, maybe physical, it could be spiritual, it could be other things, there could be things going on, uh, your transmission went out of your car, or uh, you lost your job, or you couldn't sleep last night. There's a whole variety of things, our health changes. And sometimes in the middle of all of that, we forget to call on God. Jesus is always with us. God is always with us whether we remember or not. And so I think as we listen to this, to think, you know, so what helps me think about God? What helps me remember? You know, as we, as we listen to this, it's usually a lot of times when we're having our darkest times that we think of God. You know, a lot of times when we're, everything is going the way we want it to go and we think everything is fine, Sometimes we forget that God's at the back of that, and that God is giving us the gifts and the strength. But all of a sudden, when things fall apart, it's like, oh, I can't do it. And so that's when we turn to God. But I think this reminds us to do it both times. And I think, you know, sometimes it's hard to think of God and be aware that God is with us when we're struggling. But an example, this week, we, you probably all heard of the doctor who was serving in Africa and got Ebola. In one of the newscasts, and I don't remember when it was because I didn't write it down, but they said that this doctor, when he realized that he was having the symptoms of Ebola, that he put himself into isolation so that nobody else would be contaminated from him. But then he said, when he had done that, he had the most peaceful feeling experience. It was like a peace that we cannot understand, a peace beyond any understanding. And it was like God was with him and saying, I'm going to be with you in the midst of all of this. And I think that's what happens to us too. God is with us in the midst of our suffering. This doctor had the experience and the feeling of it. Sometimes we don't experience that. We think, God, where are you? We know God's with us, but it doesn't feel like that. And so that's where our faith comes in. One writer said that faith isn't walking in water, but it's daring to believe that God is with us in the midst of the battering storms and chaos. And it doesn't concern so much a belief and a certain outcome but it suggests that we trust and we know that we have that allegiance to God. You know, we look at Peter, and Peter is often talked about as the risk taker. You know, he got out of the boat. He said, you know, tell me to come to you. And so sometimes they think we may be invited to take some risks and get out of our comfort zone too. And that's kind of hard to do. And so I think each of us have different comfort zones that we're in. And sometimes I like to be comfortable. I don't always like to get out of my comfort zone because, you know, it's nice being comfortable. And yet sometimes I think God invites us to get out of that, to reach out in some ways, maybe to uh, even share something that we wouldn't have ordinarily shared or to and be with other people in different ways, in ways that is different for us. And so I think as we're listening to this and we think of how Peter got out of the boat and reached out, so that what are the ways that today, first of all, what boat are you in? How are you being invited to re get out of that boat? If you are, maybe you're not, maybe you're invited to stay in the boat. You know, how is God speaking to you? And is there a wind that's coming up? Is there a contrary wind that's blowing against it? Or are you experiencing the gentle, soft breeze of God's presence? Whatever it is, I invite you to thank God for that. If you're experiencing the quiet, gentle breeze of calmness and peace, thank you, God. If you're in the midst of the violent wind and the storm and the waves, well, it's hard to say thank you, God. But sometimes if we could say, Okay, thank you, God, but help me get out of this. Let me feel your presence. I need your strength, you know. Uh, I want to say thank you, but it's surely hard to think of that. That's being real, okay? And so I invite us this morning as, as we listen to the winds and 
know that Jesus is with us even when we doubt. And no matter what, that we're never alone, even though it may feel that way. And so as we listen to this, let us know that God is with us no matter what. God is with us in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the breeze, into the midst of the calmness, and to know that we're a watched over, cared for, deeply loved people more than we can even imagine or believe. So I invite you today to believe that. Amen.